Aries. Welcome to your May 2019 Tarot and Astrology reading. Welcome back to the channel and if you're new here you're very welcome. Please subscribe if you enjoy this reading of course. Um, we do monthly and mid-monthlies on this channel so this can apply to your sun, moon and rising and sometimes even your Venus because a lot of the time the main content with these readings can focus on our relationships with people. Um, so your Venus can come in handy particularly because uh, Venus is in Aries right up until the 15th. So in an ordinarily grounding, stable, very earthy month, which is May, because we have the Sun in Taurus, the new moon and the fourth in Taurus, Mercury joins Taurus and then Venus leaves Aries and of course joins Taurus too. We do have a lot of earthy grounded energy and don't forget Saturn and Pluto are both retrograding in Capricorn and Uranus is also in Taurus so we do have a host of earth planets. Um, what's interesting about that for you Aries is that sometimes you can feel a little bit like scorched earth you know you can feel a little bit as though things aren't taking off in a blaze the way you like them to the way they do in Aries season, the way they do in Sagittarius and Leo season, where you feel at one with the element. If you have a lot of earth signs in your chart, for example, you're an Aries close to the cusp of Taurus and you have a lot of Taurian energy in you or um, you have Capricorn energy, it can feel a lot more smooth. But really what this Taurian um, host of planets wants you to do is to look inward and see where you need to lay down some foundations, where you need to create a bit more stability in your life you know what area in your life is currently lacking that um, security and that solid feeling that makes you feel that you can build upon it because you're not always so concerned with the foundations but at the same time you're aware of their value you know the tower is a is a mars card and mars is your ruler and the reason the tower crumbles is because it wasn't laid on proper foundations and it's a chance to rebuild so what this Taurus season is asking for you is to figure out what keeps you grounded, what practical matters you could do with attending to um, in the short term. You know, because when we move into Gemini season, it's more about your agility. It's more about your ability to think, to process information. And that can feel a lot more fulfilling to you, Aries, because it is a sextile um, motion. Now, with Venus and your sign right up until the 15th, you are still the number one dynamo in the love arena. When Venus is in your sign, particularly if your natal Venus is in Aries, um, you will feel really very attractive. You'll be the center of attention. People will flock to you easier. People will be more on your wavelength because when Venus is in a particular sign, we all take on certain attributes of that because it is how we deal with our relationships, our partnerships, how we spend our money, so when Venus is in Aries, um, you can find that people are a lot more blunt and then you're not the one in the group who is saying what everybody else is thinking and all the onus is on you, all the responsibility is on you in that sense. So it's a pretty it's a pretty good time for you to meet somebody if you're still looking. Um, if you're in a relationship, it's a wonderful time for you to come across as your best and for you to sort of take the leadership role um, when Venus is in a cardinal sign in particular, a lot of people want to lead, but when it's hosting your sign, you're the number one in most things, as Aries usually kind of is. You'll always be the first sign in the zodiac. So um, <clears throat> we do, though, have Mars going into Cancer on the 15th, and that can feel a little bit jarring. And the reason I say it's a little bit jarring is because it's a square and... As a fellow cardinal energy, you could find a bit of push and pull in your family dynamics, in your home dynamics. You will most likely feel as though you suddenly want to tear down a wall and build something else, or you suddenly want to paint everything bright red, or you certainly um, feel more motivated to make changes in the home. Just make sure that everything's not too impulsive. I just realized what a stupid thing that is to say to an Aries. But you will certainly find a lot of your energy is going towards renovations, for example. It's going to go towards um, recreating your, your cocoon, as it were. And in your family relationships, you're going to want to take a more direct approach. When Mars is in Cancer, everyone else is still feeling that kind of um, nesting mentality where they're more interested in 
keeping their cards close to their chest. The, the aggression with Mars and Cancer is almost turned inward um, because there's a feeling of self-protectedness. And sometimes people that are very, very self-protective can actually uh, attack inward more than anything else. So people around you might be a little less forthcoming, particularly as Venus will have shifted into Taurus and people will want to keep the peace. They'll want to keep things um, pretty. So let's see what's going on in the cards for Aries and see how we can match this up with the astrology. But certainly this month, Aries, if you want to manifest a, a different scenario in your bank account or you want to get on the property ladder, there's a lot of wonderful ways to do that. There's a lot of opportunities in the sky for you to invest money, make money, have ideas. And in fact, Mercury will conjunct Uranus on the 8th of May, I believe. Um, in your financial sector so you might unexpectedly receive money um, or you might come up with a genius idea to make money or go into a partnership with someone who knows how to make money okay now the second house as we can see here the two of cups the number two is important we did have two um, full moons one after the other in your partnership sector so how did that feel? Because we're going into Scorpio full moon territory on the 18th, which rules soulmates, you know? The seventh house is all about partnerships and that's lovely, it's very romantic. That's very two of cups, so that came to mind as that card popped out, but full moon in Scorpio is a real humdinger. That's gonna be enlightening, that's gonna be intense, that is going to be secretive illumination so things might come out and that's not always a bad thing secret attractions is what I kind of see from Libra to Scorpio terrain and your partnerships have gotten a real wake-up call you know they've been very very illuminated possibly relationships have stopped possibly relationships have suddenly gone to the next level um, but they've taken on a very partnership oriented energy okay and then there's going to be that full moon in Scorpio you're going to notice that a lot of your emotions possibly become more intense you might be prone to jealousy ace of cups you are going to be emotional you're going to have your cup runneth over with emotions the ace of cups is gorgeous don't get me wrong it's a gorgeous gorgeous card it's always a lovely feeling you know they're they're good emotions but they're still emotions it can they can vary there's a wide range of them about the knight of wands oh okay so you want to feel free, outgoing, liberated, excited, and then the emotions are all coming in and you're possibly trying to run away from them a little bit at times. Aries, you could be dealing with the Queen of Pentacles, a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, Six of Cups in the challenge, and the outcome is the Nine of Pentacles. Ah, oh, what's underneath? The Hanged Man. Hmm. I see very Taurian energy coming through in your cars. So you do have your mind and your money. The Queen of Pentacles can be an earth sign or it can be your earth tendencies. You're very focused on your financial affairs. You're possibly thinking more about money than ever with the current astrological climate. You're possibly noticing um, what everybody else has. For some reason, I get the impression some Aries are starting to compare themselves with the people you went to school with or the people you grew up with and you're thinking about how well they're doing. You know, maybe you get news that so-and-so who was in the same class as you that maybe didn't do so well has started a business and it's doing very well and you feel a little bit of competition or you feel a little bit like, hmm... We started off the same, what's happening there? Your mind is very focused on the material. So we always in the law of attraction think about how your belief in what you deserve is more than likely what you manifest, which is why the rich most oftentimes stay rich and the poor stay poor in a mentality aspect. Of course, there's a lot of other sociological um, reasonings behind things, but in the law of attraction sense, the idea 
is that if you feel that money is evil and money never comes to you, oftentimes it doesn't. Um, and if you feel that you deserve money and you believe that making money is possible, which is the first step to running a business or um, working your way up the career ladder, it's believing that it's possible is kind of the the main premise of success. Now, you can always change your circumstances, but you are looking as though you're walking into very pretty territory. You know, with your mind and your money and Aries as a CEO or an Aries as, you know, with a motivated goal to make money nearly always succeeds. Nearly always. I, I've i honestly known a lot of Aries in my life that do so well in business. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I can think of one, for example, and he started his own business in his 20s and he worked his way up very quickly he started a successful chain of restaurants and I think he was about 26 and he was doing really really well like he was working up very 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 quickly and making an absolute success and he bought a beautiful house in Dublin and it was very impressive drove a flashy car but he was so obsessed with the competition um I'm just looking at the Ace of Cups here. He was so obsessed with the competition and what other people were thinking of him that he drank himself silly. And it was his way of coping with all that. So no matter how well you're doing, your emotional health is key to your success moving forward, Aries. Um, How you're feeling in your emotional life and how you're feeling as a fulfilled person because money isn't going to fulfill you. Oftentimes we notice with people when you're climbing up the ladder, and this is very much to do with Saturn and, ooh, close that door, Saturn and Pluto retrograding in your career, reputation, that kind of sector, even fame. Um, the retrograde motion there is making you reconsider what success actually is to you. You know, it's making you reconsider what it is that defines success. So, you know, your idols, what do they have that you want to aspire to? If you don't have idols, what does your ideal life look like? And a lot of you guys have been realizing now that Uranus has left your sign and Chiron is there, that once you get to the peak, you don't really revel in the success. You kind of go straight on to the next thing and then the next thing. And at the moment for a lot of Aries, because we've had Uranus in your sign and um <clears throat> We've had a lot of developments there with your personality, with your agenda. It's it's very much to do now with the next thing, whatever that is to you. It's like you've worked on something and now you're looking for something a bit more emotional. Emotionally fulfilling could be a job. You're thinking of leaving what you do. Because the challenge is the Six of Cups, which makes a lot of sense. Because Mars going into Cancer, your family life, your home life, etc. can be challenging. Especially because Mars is your traditional ruler. Um, I think it's your only ruler actually. Scorpio had a traditional ruler Mars and then had Pluto. But Nine of Pentacles. You're headed towards satisfaction. I suppose I've gone around that in a very long winded way. Yes you're headed towards satisfaction this month. But you're looking at it everywhere um, outside the home. Is kind of what I'm feeling. Now the hangman suggests that you're maybe trying to see a different perspective. I'm going to see what was next. The Seven of Wands. And the Ace of Wands. Nice. I like it. For a lot of you, you're romantically interested in somebody who has a lot of money or a lot of property or a lot of business savvy or someone who's just very career focused and somebody who brings an element of practicality to your life. A lot of you, you're focusing on an earth sign female and for some of you, it's more to do with Somebody who, I guess, would be defined as, you know, long-term material. Somebody that you would want to go the distance with. So a lot of Aries, people are probably meeting a new love. Could be an earth sign. Um, Well aspected. And then the Ace of Wands suggests that instant spark. It suggests that instant connection, that chemistry. And that can go for your career as well. You've been working very hard at something and you get that idea. And you know what this is? 
this looks like Uranus to me. Uranus conjunct Mercury. It's that genius idea, that light bulb moment, something that transforms an area of your life. And for most areas, it's going to be financial, particularly if you are a March born Aries, there will be great um, ideas generating for your money or there'll be great opportunities coming up. You know, it's that kind of that, that momentum of hearing somebody simply say, you know, if oh, I found a job that I think would be perfect for you or so-and-so is looking. It's an opportunity that arises and you may not even notice it as something spectacular, um, but it is. So we have an opportunity here for you to move up the ranks in your financial sense. And it's great because with Saturn and Pluto, Pluto ruling change, retrograding in your career sector, you're less interested in what people think. You're kind of more interested in what makes you happy. You know, what fulfills your soul. You are going through a very healing process, Aries, and it's it's an incredibly thoughtful time where you're really learning how to be more in touch with your emotional side, what it is that guides you. Some of you are a little bit um, hung up, dare I say, on a past event or a past person. There's always that possibility. So with the Six of Cups and the challenge and with the Aces, it's kind of time to breathe in a fresh air, you know, fresh air, a fresh perspective on something because the Aces are all you know, these great signals of something new, something um, vibrant, something fresh and exciting rather than something old and dusty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, a new opportunity, a new relationship, that kind of thing. So if you're hung up on something or someone from the past is not there anymore. Um, sorry, that door keeps opening by itself. It's really annoying. Um, if you're hung up on somebody that's not there anymore, it is time for change. It's the seven of wands, the problem with him is that sometimes he resists it, you know what I mean? And the ace is saying it's time. And the hangman means you've possibly been waiting around for a while. But with the ten of wands underneath that, I feel as though there needs to be a completion of something weighing heavy on your heart. Because there are new doors opening for you, Aries, and it would be worth examining them. I do think out of all the signs... That Mercury-Uranus conjunction excites me most for you because it is in your financial sector, which is Taurus and both planets are in Taurus. Um, if it's not a money revelation because the second house is worth, it is a revela revelation of self-love that may be essential um, and very important actually to the rest falling into place because when you develop a great relationship with yourself if you don't have it um, that's when you notice everything does start to fall into place and your dreams start working in your favor so let's have a little look at the animal spirit cards by kim crams if you were wondering what that dragon eye in the background is it's the the cover of the deck so that you can see it if you want it um because it is a lovely, lovely deck to have. So, let's see. Aries. Ooh, the spider. Ooh, the shark. <laughs> shark and the spider and the little lamb. Spring lamb, the lambs of spring. I love that. That's gorgeous. Interesting seeing a shark and a lamb so close together though. Now, I do have to check up on the book a little bit because I am learning these still. They're very new. But the spider is not something I've come along before. It can sort of be spinning a web or um, trapping yourself. But it says that the spider is an ingenious creator. Um, its greatest gift is weaving the thread of Dharma into a fast intricate web that supports the spider and those around it both financially and spiritually that is so appropriate for what we were talking about financially you're working towards something and you're you're doing well at it and then we have the emotional aspect the spiritual aspect of the ace of cups 
It is hard work, but the spider neither tires nor becomes impatient. This card reminds us creativity is everywhere. Be process oriented rather than results oriented and such your and such your work will become like weaving a magical priceless tapestry. Abundance follows. That's amazing. <laughs> for your cards, that is amazing. For um Taurus season, which is prosperous for you, that is incredible. When in balance, appreciative, enthusiastic and prosperous. And when you're out of balance, you're discouraged, tired and forlorn. To bring into balance playfulness and creativity. That's fascinating because that is exactly what is going on with your cards. So I'm pretty happy with that. You know, enjoying the process, enjoying the fulfillment. As I did say to you, Aries, oftentimes you do get to the next level and you feel to celebrate you're on to the next thing it would it would be a good time with the tori and earth energy to practice mindfulness the shark is all about redirecting and revealing your true nature and desire the shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it so there is sort of something lurking in your emotional waters um something needs to be exposed that's very scorpio full moon for me it's lurking in the depths creating tension so there's something within you that you need to expose and i do think it goes back quite far quite back to the past it's lurking in the depths and creating tension shark energy takes over us when we're hesitant to be honest and totally ourselves or to say what we really want it may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong but when the shark energy is at play we feel its presence circling us okay so when in balance intriguing captivating and mysterious when out of balance sneaky and destructive so the scorpio full moon i'm getting will expose something within your deeper nature something within your more intense persona so there's something that you fear or there's something that you're afraid to acknowledge if you're brave enough if you feel like you could Sound it off in the comment section. Say what it is that you're scared of and encourage each other to be brave. Encourage each other to go get what you want. Encourage each other to love yourself. Encourage each other that you can do it. If you're afraid of something or something has rattled you, support each other in the comments. Put it out there. Once you have exposed your fear, it doesn't have as much power over you anymore okay Aries that's one of the ways that I see it say it out loud and say that you're not scared of it anymore because you can face anything there's a reason you're an Aries you were born for this sort of thing you were born to go against um, your own limits your own restrictions that's just kind of your your mantra really I am so say I am brave I am fearless I am going to do this the lamb, the lamb is the bearer of an important message. Its contents can only be heard when a deep level of quiet has been established. Lamb energy is the honest guidance you hear from an old friend, a young child, or sometimes a surprising stranger. The, the, the lamb's message may channel through another person. The wisdom resonates within you. So hey, hopefully this reading is a lamb moment for you and hopefully it's given you something. Um, if not, there's loads of readings on here that are wonderful, you know, from other people, from other tarot readers, from other astrologers, lots of it out there. Um, it will repeat and reverberate until you listen. Approach this gentle creature with utmost patience and reverence. Truth is a gift. Sit still, listen, receive. So you're working towards inner peace. And you won't get there through fighting it. Acknowledge that shark. Say it out loud, get it out there and then let it go because once you've acknowledged it it's not that scary anymore and a lot of sharks you just have to tap them on the nose the most sensitive part of a shark is its nose if you are if, i hope you don't ever come into contact with a shark but it is said that if you punch it on the nose it will leave you alone so if you can take whatever fear you have and punch it on the nose you're going to move into very prosperous times so i hope you got something from that aries um I hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it please subscribe to the channel it would mean a lot to have you here and i will see you guys next month bye